none of that shit. Shame on you. You son of a god. Pretentious von Garb motherfucker thinks he's Eisenstein or some shit. Jeez. Get the fuck over yourself. Okay, what are we doing? I told you already. Tell me again. Fine arts assignment. Two artists, what they're about, how they compare, and how they relate to the human experience. Who'd you pick? Pollock and Warhol. Right, right. Who were they? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, let's start with Jackson Pollock. He was born in 1912, one of five sons. He spent his early years in Arizona and California, where he was introduced to the aesthetics of Native American culture. He had multiple expulsions from high school before being taken under the wing of Thomas Benton with his brother Charles at the Art Students League in New York. What type of art did he do? Um, painting. Well, I can see that. What movement? Abstract Expressionism. Thank you. That's pretty interesting, yeah? And it takes a sec to take it all What the hell am I looking at? <sighs> okay, look. I told you it was abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that part. You want to explain to me why it just kind of looks like he took a bunch of colors and dripped them all over the place? Well, that's kind of what he did. Pollock is most famous for popularizing a sort of action painting. He placed the canvas on a flat-floored surface, which allowed him to work from all sides. He also used different mediums like glass and added foreign matter for texture. His drip paintings, therefore, had an energetic and spontaneous quality to them. I don't work from drawings or color sketches. My painting is direct. Having the canvas on the floor, I feel nearer, more of a part of the painting. This way I can walk around it, work from all four sides, and be in the painting. I don't buy it. I mean, the method is a cool enough change as it is, but it literally looks like he just grabbed a stick, dipped it in paint, and started... You know, ah, uh, come on, there's more to the technique than just dabbing. Sometimes I use a brush, but often prefer using a stick. Huh. Okay, moving on. Andy Warhol was born in 1928, the youngest of three. He was born with a neurological disorder which partly shaped his introverted personality. As a child, he took leisure in popular magazines and DC comic books. Then, as an adult, after he turned heads with some award-winning ad campaigns, he embarked on a quirky journey where he essentially made himself a famous artist. By using his own perspective of pop culture and the people's obsession with fame and success, the latter of which oddly enough resulted in his own fame and success, he became the poster boy for what became known as pop art. Now I remember this guy. From what I've gathered, he was a pioneering hipster. Is that so? You know, super arrogant, clearly trying to go against the grain of everyone around him. I mean, don't get me wrong, his art is significant. It's stylish, it's modern, it's reflective of the culture and all that. But uh, from the way people say he carried himself, he sounds pretty reprehensible. Have you seen his interviews? I mean, sure, he definitely had his beef with the media, but he was by no means your run-of-the-mill hipster. Oh yeah, prove it. Andy, do you feel that the public has insulted your art? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, well, I hadn't thought about it. It doesn't bother you at all, then? Uh, no. Well, do you think that they have shown a lack of appreciation for what pop art means? Uh, no. Andy, do you think that pop art has sort of reached the point where it's becoming repetitious now? Uh, yes. Do you think it should break away from being pop art? Uh, no. Are you just going to carry on? Uh, yes. I can't, I'm, I can't, I'm so empty today, I can't think of anything. Why don't you just tell me the words and they'll just come out of my mouth? No, don't worry about it because we... No, no, I think it'd be so nice. But we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, come out, we'll, come we'll out. loosen up after a while. Well, well uh, no, it's not that. It's just I can't, um, I have a cold and I can't, uh... Okay. Uh, think of anything and it'd be so nice if you told me a sentence. Well, let me ask repeat. you some questions that you can answer. Oh, no, but you repeat the answers too. The centricities aside, Warhol's trademark was one of great innovation. Incorporating popping, complementing colors in a process of silk screening, he recreated everything from soup cans and soda products to celebrities and politicians in a unique, pop culture-ready style. Love it or hate it, the public was hooked. Fun fact. 
Once all Andy got his fill of painting, he actually started making his own films. Now you're speaking my language. I'm assuming there are more or less art house pictures. That is correct. Well, those are an acquired taste. You and I both know that, but I can still like them. Anything in particular that he's done? Well, there's one piece I remember called Empire, which is just one long, stagnant look at the Empire State Building. Sounds intriguing enough. What are we talking? 5, 10, 15? Hell, 30 minutes long or something? From what I recall, it's around 7... 8 hours long. Nope, 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 nope. Well, now that my psychological doppelganger's out of the way, maybe it's time you and I had some heart-to-heart. Some real talk. You and the Questa. With the fourth wall officially broken, I don't believe we need the formality of a script. And before anyone brings it up, I'll just address the fact that this is definitely something that I could have done in person rather than on screen. But uh, I frankly don't have that much faith in my real life uh, counterpart. I mean, just, just look at him. On here, I'm as charming as I need to be. You get the picture. So after looking at Pollock and Warhol, there's clearly a lot of differences and a lot of similarities. On one hand, they are very iconic in terms of their movement. Andy Warhol is very much pop as much as Jackson Pollock is very much abstract expressionism. I mean, of course, expressionism in itself is very uh, subjective to the artist. Like, it can literally be anything, any concept, any combination of shapes and whatnot that give a visceral expression of the artist's emotion. When you're looking at Pollock, you're looking at the technique, the uh, ideology that goes behind the process of the painting. Whereas with Andy Warhol, it's more of an ongoing commentary of his relationship with the media, with uh, mass-produced culture. Looking at a Pollock painting, I'm very much aware of the uh, psychological turmoil that might have been going on in his head whenever he was working on his paintings. So if you're looking at a painting like the one that we were looking at earlier, you can feel something. You're not quite sure what it was, but again, that's the point of abstract expressionism. All you know is that you're feeling something. You're feeling some kind of emotion, some sort of power, just by looking at this mishmash of shapes and these movements that he managed to craft using his technique. Similarly, when I look at a Warhol painting, I, I just sense this disconnection, this like totally objective look at our culture. Celebrities, mass-produced goods, like we see all of these different pieces of iconography daily and this is kind of like a exaggerated oversaturated version of that and ironically enough it looks super cool like i would want a recreation of a coke bottle hanging on my wall while i'm drinking my coke it, it just has that kind of uh, synergy going on it's really late <laughs> as far as what these two artists mean to me they're kind of like a at least in a contemporary setting, they show what art can do, like the kind of impact it can have on individuals. Like, there's room for the simplicity of just feeding off of your own emotional power, your own, like, inward struggles or passions. You know, there's a potential to use that as fuel to make something that can evoke a similar or equally powerful emotion in somebody else. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, you can hold up the face of society to the face of society by almost making like a caricature like you have the opportunity to do all of these things and it like I, I just think that the power of art in general is just totally encapsulated in these two artists they really struck a chord with me this semester i mean i can see myself ap applying their their ideals their ideologies pollock perhaps a bit more than warhol just in that like if I have that artistic drive, if I have, like, the thirst to express myself in any shape or form, I can do it just by feeding off of my own emotions, feeding off my own energy, and just finding some sort of medium. It doesn't matter what. It could be a flip phone. It can be a, a mini DB camera. It could be this camera I'm talking to right now. Whatever I have lying around, it works. In any way I do it, it will work to somebody in the world. And that, you know, that, that's just kind of what Pollock showed with his career. So now I need to create my own piece of art, and I think now that I don't have any distractions, I'll finally have time to do that. And if I'm going to be copying Pollock in some way, expressionism in film is definitely different from expressionism in painting.
nonetheless the goal of each is to evoke whatever psychological conundrum is going on in my head on screen and i think i know how 